Alright guys, it's Jim here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to ship a guitar in two scenarios. Both don't have a hard case. The first one is going to be when you have the original packaging. This is going to be a lot simpler. So, we have this guitar right here. It's Harley Benton. First thing I like to do, and I do this on every single guitar I ship out. I've never had to use this, but I show, I take a video of the exact condition that the guitar is in before I pack it up. So this guitar, obviously, it's flawless, no problem. It's gonna go right into this. Now when you have the original box, obviously this is a much, much easier process. However, it still needs to be said there are a few things that you should do. Now, with less Paul style headstocks like this one, I like to loosen the strings a little bit, that takes the tension off, which means you're less likely going to have stress on the headstock. Voila. We're gonna place it right back in. See, this fits like a glove. We're not gonna have any problems. There's not gonna be any movement. Movement is your number one enemy when it comes to having a guitar being shipped. And when you do have the factory packaging, it's easier to make sure it's gonna be secure. However, with some of them, like the fenders, they don't come in these wedge boxes where it has a neck insert for it to sit in and it's not as molded. So they have other ways of kind of securing their instruments. This one, it'll be perfect as is. Now another thing I like to do here, I like to use these, I think of this is a blanket. Most guitars will come in these if they don't come in a, in a hard shell case. Now that we've established the guitar is in perfect condition, we've documented it. Place it in, put that on it, okay? Not reinventing the wheel. Now we're gonna tie it around, add a little bit of security. But now with the headstock, before I put that on, I like to use one of these guys. When it comes in a wedge box like this, I use this more often than not. If it has its own gig bag, you're never gonna see me use one of these. And if it has a hard case, even less chance. Just a little extra security on for the headstock. Always have a trusty knife with you. If you do this here, it'll take a little bit of the air out. Sure, this is gonna sit really, really securely, and it is. You don't want any paint really exposed in this either, but look, it's not going anywhere. So now that we've done that, let's wedge back in. Now when it comes to tape, you don't want to use the cheap tape you're going to get at the dollar store. This is an expense that's worth it. This is a scotch packaging tape. It's, it's not really that expensive. And if you're going to be shipping a guitar, you want to make sure it's going to get there safely. Trust me, you don't want to deal with UPS or any other brand when it comes to dealing with insurance claims. It's not fun, as you have seen from my videos. Now, over the last year, I have shipped out over a hundred guitars. And because I don't feel like you can go too overboard and I like to protect you know, because this is somebody's investment. This is somebody's tool. I try as hard as I can, even to a fault sometimes, I'll over tape things, I'll over secure things, just to make sure that nothing bad happens in transit. And if you're the buyer in this instance, if you get a guitar and it does not show up in the exact condition that you saw the pictures in, the first thing you have to do, is contact the seller immediately. Because if you don't do that and then you wait, you basically just assume any responsibility. Because as soon as you open it, if you notice there's anything wrong with that guitar, you have to contact the buyer. Or the seller. Alright, so this guitar is all good. Good test you want to do is you want to make sure you don't hear any movement. As you can hear, the mic is right there. There's nothing. This ain't going anywhere. This is all good. Now this was the easy example. All I'd have to do now is, I put this in the big Tolman box that it came in. 
pat it with these guys, this one gets a label, it's ready to go. Now let's do an example where you don't have the original box. Okay, in this example, all you have is a guitar and a gig bag. I like to use the Stu Mac boxes for a few reasons. One, that you're gonna see in a second. However, if you don't have a box and you don't wanna order a bunch like I do, maybe you're just doing a one-off thing, you can contact your local music store and ask them if they have gotten any recent shipments in. Most of the time, they'll give you a box for free. Sometimes, even if you go on Craigslist, there will be people that'll just say, come pick this box up. And in a worst case scenario, you can always find your local guitar center, wait until the morning, <laughs> Go and check the dumpster, you're all good. Get yourself a box there. You just want to make sure it hasn't been soaked in rain, otherwise it's gonna, you know, jeopardize the quality. So, in this instance, we're gonna pretend, because I didn't sell this guitar, it'll never happen. We take my strat, my first strat, squire. Goes in the gig bag. Alright? Boom. Now. The first rule of thumb here. This is gonna be the box, right? So the box will be full size. I currently don't have one built. I'm not gonna build this one for the sake of doing it. We're just gonna explain, because uh, what's important is how you're actually going to secure the guitar inside of the gig bag, inside of the case. So I would have a brand new box here. You might have a box that's already built. First of all, inside, what I like to do is, I like to bubble wrap the gig bag itself first before I do anything else. Then, after I bubble wrap this guitar, I'm not actually gonna do it because like I said, this guitar is not for sale. I'll put a little bit extra of this padding or bubble wrap, depending on which one I have more of, on the bottom, just to add a little bit more security. Then I'll either fill it out with this or with bubble wrap after the fact. This is very important. Don't use peanuts. Peanuts are made for eating. They are not made for packing guitars. Just, just don't do it. I've never had a good shop ever send me a guitar that was shipped in peanuts, ever. The only place that's ever done that was Guitar Center. But outside of that, every respectable shop, it's just not gonna happen. And there's a reason why when you order a guitar from Gibson, from Fender, from PRS, they don't have peanuts either. It's just, it's, it's not the way to do this. So, the last thing I wanna show you here, the main reason I use the Stumac is because of this. This is an insert, okay? Now, this is especially important on Gibson style guitars. However, see this? Right here? This will prevent the headstock from moving back and forth even more so. Really, you're just covering your ass a little bit more when you ship a guitar and use something like this. However, if you don't use Stumac, I'm gonna tell you how you can make one of these real quick. So you're gonna get yourself one of your little box cutter knives you want to cut out six inches on both sides, this down, eight inches that way. That's going to clear a gig bag, absolutely no problem with the headstock already on. And that's it, you're, just, you're covering your butt here. The last thing you want to do is have a guitar get, get damaged. And these guitars are fragile, man. You want to take this seriously. And the last thing you want to do, I cannot sp express this enough, you don't want to deal with an insurance claim. So anything that you can do, it might take you an extra five minutes to do this, to take a piece of cardboard, bend it, and then cut out this little thing. But it's worth it for your peace of mind. So for example here, this guitar is in the PRS gig bag, normal size gig bag. This guy, Still fits right over. Beautifully. Beautifully. It's a perfect fit. So then this would also help to secure the instrument once it's inside of the case itself. You get to the bottom here. So you would have this at the top, more towards the headstock. The bottom is going to be filled with either your, your choice of the bubble wrap or the, the kind of paper that you use as well. The paper is really efficient and every shop I get from Japan guitars from, they all tend to prefer that over any sort of bubble wrap, but bubble wrap's a little bit easier to get your hands on. And the last thing you do now that you assumed you would pack either of these instruments up, whether it's one in a gig bag or one that's in the wedge box, when you're filling out your paperwork online to ship it or you bring it into the UPS store, I do not recommend going into the stores, whether it's FedEx or UPS or the post office. You could sign up for a free account online. You're going to get a big discount that way. You don't need to be a business to do so. When you're filling out the dimensions and you declare the correct value, you want to ensure whatever you're sending for the right amount. 
because these companies won't care if you can provide a receipt of what's inside and it's worth infinitely more than the insurance you claimed on it. They are only going to insure the amount that you declare. Furthermore, if you're using UPS and you're doing over $1,000, you need to have a driver come and pick it up. And you also never go to the UPS store to drop it off because those are independent franchises. They will only honor up to $1,000 worth of insurance coverage. You also just want to make sure that the UPS driver, when he does come to pick it up, have him sign the piece of paper that it prompts you to print out at the end of the labeling process. So now that your guitar has been protected, it's been packed correctly, you've taken pictures of it, you've taken video, if you're really, really neurotic like I am, just to make sure that nothing is of liability to you, you got nothing to worry about. It may seem like this is a bit too much, but guys, with the amount of people and how rough you know, these, these companies can be with these boxes. As you've seen from a lot of the unboxes I've had, some of them look like they've been thrown off of the truck. You can't be too careful. You want to take all responsibility off of yourself. Take the extra time, spend a few extra bucks, do it right, do it the first time. Then if their problem does arise, you're good. But that's going to be where I'm going to wrap up this video. If this was helpful, please leave a like. Leave me a comment down below if you have any extra techniques when it comes to gig bag, and those kinds of guitars, once without the hard case, without a hard case, this is very, very, very simple. So other than that, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another guitar-related video. Take it easy, you guys.